Hello everybody, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Aurora 4X. Uh, where we left off last, uh, we had just jumped our combat fleet into a system uh, that appears to have some swarm in it. And uh, we are now going to be doing something about that. So, we have our primary AWACS group with our missile destroyers. Uh, AWACS 2, uh, it's named AWACS because it's picked it up, picked the name up from a while back and having both to change it. Um, AWACS 2 is, no, AWACS is our point defense group, uh, and we're not dealing with bombers, we're going to be dealing with Mason fighters, so we don't need these guys. Uh, AWACS 2 are our missile destroyers, they're too slow to deal with it. Uh, AWACS 3 is, um is our two laser destroyers, and these are going to be doing the grunt work. Uh, and then we have our shore water carrier, which is potentially going to be dropping some fighters um, to do some bombing runs. But we'll be saving those, we're keeping those in reserve for the moment. So, AWACS 3, do your thing. Um, I will be sending the Jump Scout Warmonger, because I believe it's just fast enough. There we go. And AWACS 3, 10, 964. 9, 6, 4. Okay. And begin. Um, I'll need to make sure sensors are on. Yes, on, good. Okay, we're going to be a few hours out. Should be coming up on them soon. There they are. Cool. All right. So now <clears throat> uh, what speed do they do? I oh, will find that in a second. So we'll remove this and we will turn around. Same with the Waramonga. But for the AWACS 3, we will reduce speed down to 5,000. Ten six hundred. Oh, perfect. We'll set this to 10,700. So now it will remain pretty well, it'll pretty much maintain this distance from the fighters. But we need to let them close in. It's a very small swarm. There's not very many fighters on here at the moment. I expect a lot of them are still docked to the uh, Queen.
Okay. So. Well then, here we go. So, because of the way these guys are designed, automated fire will work. There we go. So, it will be using automated fire to blow these guys to pieces. Now, we're just going to let them get within range. Uh, open fire, come on. Oh, right, fire control's only this short. Hmm, okay, that's fine. I think that is, what kind of range did they get? So it range 12,000 kilometers. So obviously uh, they're not that short. Um, 20%. Yeah, let's be a little bit on the safe side. Ooh. We're going to hit. Alright, we're doing a decent amount of damage. And it's close to 40% on the hit rate, so I am pleased with that. Another couple of hits. More hits. And more hits. This, I've said it before, I'll say it again, this is why speed is king. If he, if he was faster than me, I wouldn't stand the chance. He would come in and I would get Maison to death. Uh, with only two ships, it's highly unlikely that one of them will be able to kill all of these guys before they killed off the other one. And if they spread their fire, they would more than likely more than likely knock out some critical components before um, I would get a chance to uh, do too much about it. I mean, sure, I would knock out a few of them, but not all of them. Um, however, because I have both speed and range, doesn't stand the chance. Almost. More hits. And this should do it. 
Pow, pow. Looks like it's crippled. Good. Turn around and... Move back this way at a speed of... Yeah, make it 6,000. Destroyed. Another one destroyed. All right, so with these guys out of the way, with these guys out of the way, let's start moving up our primary fleet. So Waramunga, move, start, turn around and move up. And we'll... Uh, that probably won't have missiles, but no point risking it. AWACS 2, combine into AWACS 1, join. Uh, shell water. Okay, there it is. Uh, shell water, I actually want you. To absorb a wax entirely. Okay, and then move on to the wreck. Another one destroyed. More hits. Okay. It's ready to move. <clears throat> uh, AWACS 3 should be able to finish these guys off well before anybody actually gets there because it's going to take them a few hours. And this will all be over in a few minutes. That's another kill. That's another kill. Hmm, didn't kill it. There we go. And done. All right. Now we can set it to max and we will go and tell it to join Waramonga. Okay. Now we will continue moving on and see if we can find any more fighters or a queen. <laughs> now a queen is going to be extremely annoying because it 
takes a lot of uh, concentrated fire to actually kill a queen. Uh, because, yeah, she's got Maisons, but at the end of the day, um, she also has some pretty impressive shields. So, yeah, that's a queen. Anything else? Nope. The biggest advantage, of course, is that a queen is so bloody slow. Alright, we will follow her at... 100,000... Let's say... 180... No. 200,000 kilometers. Yeah, this is a really tiny swarm. I mean, they don't even have any um, harvester ships. <clears throat> I've only got a handful of soldiers in the... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop. Queens like to keep a small reserve of fighters in stock, so if you send in your beam ships first, they are very liable to get their faces kicked in <clears throat> when they close into beam range and then suddenly a half dozen fighters appear at point blank range. So, very, very bad news. <clears throat> if we were to do that. So, I will leave him... I will leave them there to watch her. And in the meantime, we'll get shell water to. Oops. Uh, well, we'll get shell water to follow at. At a hundred million distance. Uh, this will put us in missile strike range from all our other ships, and also um, easy bomber strike range um, for the carrier. And with the Queen being that slow, there's no way she's going to be able to catch us up. So the 6,000 kilometer speed is not uh, necessarily a problem. I think we will launch one bombing raid. And yeah, we'll we'll launch a bombing a quick bombing strike and see if we can get it to pop those farm pop those fighters. Zoom in and see how we're doing. Almost within range. There we go. All right. Viking Warriors. Lock fire controls. And open fire. Oh, 
It's got ECM. Uh, 44 million kilometers, is it? No, down to 40. So we're about four kilometers out. So, okay, cease fire. That should be far enough. What's the range of that? 40, yep. Open fire. Oh, come on! There we go. Okay. Vikings, return home. Begin rearming. And uh, stop trying to fire. Okay. Now this will definitely not damage the queen because she's got way more shields than that um, top torpedoes can possibly hope to overwhelm. But like I said, this is just to try and force her to pop her fighters. Easy hit. And there they are. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Hmm, just wondering whether I should whether I should launch my bombers on an intercept uh, capacity. You know what? Yeah, why not? Hmm, why not? It's because of the queen. Um. Yeah, why not? Launch. Nighthawks, get in there. Probably should have brought them along first, huh? I mean, Warmonger's going to get a chance to shoot at him way before anything else will. Uh, better actually get him revved up. Because of the order delay, um, I can't afford to have them run at... Um, to give them the order to move... Um, when they're already within range, because then the order delay will end up getting letting them get too close, and then we got big problems. So, how far off are they? Only a few minutes, apparently. I'd better stop these guys. I don't necessarily want to let them get much, very much closer. They're going to be almost within range. Well, they're, in sen they're definitely in senses range, but they're almost within fire range. Oh, 
Oh no, they weren't minutes out, they were hours out. About three hours. Okay, ramp up the speed. Uh, quick throw an extra space in there. Okay, uh, ramp the speed up to 8,000. We'll let him get a wee bit closer. There we go, that'll do. 10666. Now, we have to find out if those bombs are actually going to make it to do anything. In this age, it looks like they will, because I think we're a little bit further out than last time. So... I might slow them down a wee bit. Yeah, we're going to slow them down to an even 10,000. That way they'll gain, but very, very slowly. I can get it down to about... Maybe 150? And okay, that's a bit close for comfort. Let's get back up to full speed. We can't see, now we're going to be able to see when they actually lose engine as well, because the thermal, uh, we got a th um, contact sensor update. Now, this is a good range. This is a good range. We're getting some pretty solid um, damage out at the moment. Yep, another engine knocked out. Yeah, Nighthawks are not going to get a chance. Uh, I suppose they can do mop-up. They're a hell of a lot faster than they can just fly by and just drop a missile on any, any target that survived. Assuming, of course, that the Queen hasn't arrived and uh, picked up all her soldiers. Hang on, we got an intelligence update. What on what? Hmm, okay. Ah, oh, it's just fluid streaming. Another kill. One damage out. Oh, ship destroyed.
I think we shaved about half of them off for now. We should probably get a bit more range on those fire controls, I think. What are we doing with fire control range? We've got the speed rating. What is a 48? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, queue it up. Uh, there is something that I want to ch check real quick with the Melbournes. So, so we've got 256,000 range, but that's because of the fire control. Ooh. Okay. Keep going. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. We're also shooting giant megawatt lasers. But to be honest, we're probably in the gigawatt range, if not about, if not terawatt range. I mean, a one damage laser is equivalent in five in energy output as um, a small portion of a one damage nuclear bomb, right? So a one damage laser is equivalent energy output to, I think it works out to probably like 0.4 of a nuclear, of a, of a one damage nuclear bomb. Oh, we ran out of targets, okay. And the reason why it's 0.4 is because, I mean, like, the, the missiles don't necessarily detonate on the hull, right? So they're a small distance out. So I believe it's the uh, inverse square law. Is it inverse square or inverse cube? Uh, one of those. But basically, you know, the, the, the further away you get from a circular emission, um, you... Take like you, you take half the you take you receive half the energy at twice the distance out, um, right? No, less than half. You take you, I think you take a quarter of the energy um, by doubling the range, right? So you're already taking um, less than half. So, so if the if the nuclear if the nuke were to detonate against the hull, you would take you would receive half the energy. So half the energy would radiate back out into space, and half the energy would go into you because it's a sphere, right? Um, and so half the energy is entering you, but because the nuke doesn't detonate directly against the hull, um, then. Oh, bloody hell, the bombers aren't going to be able to lock onto it. Okay. Um, yeah, because the blast is a sphere and it doesn't detonate directly against, against the hull, um, then you're probably looking at a, at a little bit less than 0.5 of the uh, energy hit. And maybe somebody can do the math, but not, not really... Um, eh. Um, and... Yeah, so 
you only so you know and whereas a one damage laser all the energy is concentrated into the hull so you know point point four point four five of a nuclear bomb worth of um damage um of an equivalent with, with the equivalent energy output so yeah that that's a lot of power in those um in those nukes you know Okay, 100 million, that should be 100 million, yep. So yeah, it's, it's going to be at least in the megawatt range. Uh, and quite possibly in the gigawatt range to be able to output energy equivalents of, you know, nuclear bombs. Ooh, double kill. <clears throat> Boom. Obliterated. Okay. Another kill. Almost finished with a sweep. Ouch. Strength 10 and strength 16. They really didn't stand a chance. Okay. Now. We should be able to move in to. kilometers. And uh, start. Pew pewing the queen. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, these guys need to move. Oh, actually, no, they can just stay there for now. Alright, uh, Viking Warriors are docked. I should have reloaded momentarily. Alright, there's their active sensor. You know what? Yeah, launch launch the strike. Only a few million kilometers out. All right, we got shields. All right, 
Uh, Viking Warriors have reloaded, so launch. Alright, how are we doing on that range? Should be close. Uh, we've got his thermals. Uh, we'll set Waramonga to 3000. No, 2400 for a nice slow close. Um, they'll probably be still a bit too far out for now. She's running. All right, for open fire and and now there we go. Pew pew. All right, so she's recharging two shield per second, and we have an average damage output of about three or four per three seconds so I think our, our lasers are pretty much going to be relegated to keeping her shield at the level that we want it Sixty. We might need to close in a little bit. Um, let's change that to one forty, and we'll see how much of a difference that makes. Four points of damage. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. So we're getting two and four. That should be decent. We'll slow it down to 1,200. And how are we doing on those bombers? Okay. Uh, all targets set and open fire. Good. All right, we've got Nighthawks, get back home.
Now, it's important that you don't get too close to the to a queen, uh, because last time I fought a queen, she uh, rammed you, rammed me, and a sixty thousand ton ship is uh, well, it does a lot of damage. So don't let a queen ram you. That is my advice. Jesus, that, that those shields are, are freaking strong. <clears throat> and we have several minutes in between volleys, so. This is going to take a while. I wonder if we can creep a little bit closer. Let's check how much damage output we can actually do with the Melbourne 2s. Uh, Melbourne 2s so we are... so at 100,000 kilometers we can only do 4 and 6. If we want to get close we have to get within 50 but that means that she's definitely going to be able to hit us with Maisons which means that... uh oh. Okay, um, which means that we're probably not gonna, we're definitely not gonna be able to kill her with the five, with the two beam ships that we've got. Okay, Warramonga. Uh, a bit close there. Now, our fleet's out of position. Warramonga gonna have to pull back. Okay. Yeah, so what I might do is just do a full-on massive alpha strike um, once our missile boats get into position. And then I'll move the two beam ships back in. Okay, we lost engine readings. Let's see how many shields this uh, bombing run takes out. So we got. Seven, four, we've got 21, 19 damage torpedo. So this is going to be a big hit. The only question is, how big are we talking about? And kaboom. Okay, so yeah, a couple hundred. So it's gone from 600 to 400. So recharge is about 10 per 5 seconds, so yeah, that's what we expected. You know what, Squadron 6... 
return home for now. We're gonna have to let the um, we're gonna have to let shell water close in. All right, we got full reload. Okay, now we can take Warmonger, turn him around, and follow at a range of 150,000 kilometers. Close at a decent rate. Uh, let's check missile uh, speeds for a sec. So, the torpedo is doing 23,000 and the arrow E is doing 27,000. So that means that the torpedo is going to have to be fired at a little bit closer than the arrow E. Because we're have the war because we going to have the Warramonga hopefully main uh, maintaining their shields, um, we won't necessarily need to... We won't necessarily need to line them up exactly, but it would, of course, help a lot if we did. So, squadrons, launch. Absorb, then move to at top speed. Uh, yeah, good enough. <clears throat> All right. Sheehan's lock target. And open fire. To Brooks, you are not ready to lock targets yet. Okay, fine. Hold fire on the Sheehan's. Let things close in a little bit more. Uh, whoop, close, close, close. Very close. Okay, everybody up and fire. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Lock and fire. Okay, so we'll uh, get these guys to shut the hell out because it's still a bit far out. Hmm, we got to 120 without being shot at. So let's try 120,000. But we'll slow down to. 2000.
Okay, good. We're dealing three damage per hit. Ah, Tabrooks, how you doing? Still a bit far out. Okay, so doing three and five damage per hit. So that should be a lot more capable of holding uh, them out. Forty one still, come on. I'm gonna have to put some ECCM on those bombers. After miniaturizing them, of course. And we're going on range to Brook. 40. Thirty-nine point nine. We'll have to get a little bit closer. Nine point three. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Open fire. Yeah, it's still a little bit out, but should be firing soon. All right, all weapons launched. <clears throat> Good. Cease fire and head home. How are we going to get missiles? Yeah, they're going to take a while. Uh, if I remember correctly, queens have approximately 6 to 10 Maisons. So, they can pose a significant threat um, to any ship that does get too close. So, I definitely want to get, I definitely don't want to get in, get in its face. And of course, there's a whole ramming thing. Which, you know, they can survive and you can't. And I'm fairly confident I don't have missile fire rate um, to guarantee a kill using just missiles. You know what would be great for this? Microwaves. Microwaves would be awesome. Here's a piece of advice. Um, if you're fighting... Uh, if you're expecting swarm, bring some micro... Uh, or at least a swarm queen. Bring some microwaves. They do triple damage to shields, and they can knock out the fire controls so that you can close into point-blank range with your lasers. In fact, get some microwaves anyway, uh, because they are kind of cool. Um, I think I might actually go for uh, a few levels of microwave as well. Yeah, queue up some microwaves. And then, of course, you know, that yeah, so, so they deal triple, triple damage to shields. Or is it quadruple damage to shields? They deal a lot more damage to shields. And they... Um, and yeah, they knock out uh, sensors and fire controls. So you fly in, you 
use microwaves to snipe out their sensors and their fire controls. And then you close it into point blank range and sh or close enough to, you know, a couple of thousand kilometers out. And then you pew pew them with your lasers at point blank range for full damage. So, or even better with carronades. Yeah, drop some point blank carronades on them. That'll, that'll learn them. At this range, though, I'm really reluctant to um, issue any orders because they could easily close within range and snipe me with the Mazons. Torpedoes aren't too far out, and neither are the arrows, so we'll be seeing some results soon. Oh, how much damage are we looking at from one of our missiles? So we've got 6 times 15, each one does 9. Huh. Our missile waves should actually be sufficient to penetrate through their shields. We'll find out shortly. Alright, first uh, torpedoes are about five, kilo, 5 million kilometers out. And the arrows are not too far behind them. So, 16 times 3 times 14. Hmm. The thing is, even these torpedoes should be able to overwhelm their shields. Unless I'm counting the damage wrong. So, we'll see how much damage we actually deal. Alright, for torpedoes are almost in. They're seconds out now. Boom. All right, we got 33 hits of 16. Wow. Oh, we do have, it does have point blank fire. Huh. Uh, so we lost three volleys, but the rest all hit. Rendering their shields down to 60. Jesus! That'll start climbing in, but hopefully Waramonga will be able to keep it low enough around that 60 mark so that when the next volley comes in, or when the uh, first volley of arrows comes in, um, it will be able to overwhelm what's left. How far out is it? Still probably a few minutes out. Yeah, it'll be able to overwhelm what's left, and um, yeah, it's it's not able to maintain the shields, but it's definitely stopping them from recharging as fast as they could. <clears throat> I definitely should have brought more of the beam ships.
Okay, I'm just gonna auto turn it. So minimum increments uh, tells the game to run auto turns uh, regardless of what's actually pausing, uh, what act what's actually happening. So normally um, we would have to wait. It would it would interrupt every time a weapon went off. Um, but at this stage, uh, but with the minimum with the minimum increments, it'll do ten auto turns regardless of what's actually happening. So it can be great for situations like this where you really don't want to be clicking that button every single time, and it does make them cycle faster because it takes away your reaction time and um, processing is a little bit neater. But it can be dangerous because if the enemy does something unexpected. Uh, it'll just barrel right through that, right? And even if you end up, you know, taking a, to uh, a full torpedo volley up the tailpipe, uh, yeah, it's not going to stop. It won't stop for any reason at all unless you untick auto turns. Um, but that just stops auto turns in general, so, you know. They're getting most of their shields back. See, this is problematic, right? Because if they, if they can shoot down three full volleys, then we're going to lose half of our firepower, right? And I think we've already fired off all of our missiles. I really, I really should have split the missiles into multiple volleys, but oh well. Shall water get in there? Go for a million kilometers, get into AMM range. <clears throat> well, the shields are only going to be sitting around 500, so they're not going to be completely full, and hopefully, we'll be able to do some damage um, with anything that breaks through. Hopefully, something will break through, but. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Alright. First one coming in now. And a snap! Oh damn! So yeah, it was able to shoot down a few of them, but we still got sixty-four strength nine hits. That's gotta hurt armor. Let's have a look. <clears throat> so we lost twenty-six arrow E's. So it looks like two salvos and a bit, or no, one almost two full salvos. And we got hit, 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 hit. Uh, yep, we definitely got armor hits. So we have dealt some damage. All right. And it, what the best part is that we knocked out, we knocked out the shields. So our beams have also dealt a bit of damage, so that's going to have penetrated his armor. So, yeah, three more. Well, not penetrated armor, but definitely dealt damage to armor. <clears throat> Did that break, that beat his shields? <clears throat> nah, probably not. No, not that one. Well. <clears throat> Let's find the next volley 
um, will be the, the gap between the next volleys will be much will be much closer, and <clears throat> they're not going to be able to regenerate full shields. Probably, yeah, they're going to be able to get maybe a hundred shields. The next volley is going to is you know literally a minute or two away, and just doesn't have the shield regeneration to get up get enough shields to stop it. I mean, even at full shields. With point defense, we probably couldn't. But even with full shields, we'd be able to strip almost all of them away with a, with, a, with each salvo. So <clears throat> this is going to be devastating, and I'm fairly confident that the queen it will not be able to survive this barrage. <clears throat> um, I think I will actually tell. Do they even have any ammo left? No, down to AMMs. Oh, ceasefire. They got no ammo anyway. So at a bit less than third shields, salvo hit. With another sixty three impacts. Let's have a look at those. We got hits, 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 hits. Ah, we broke through armor. We hit a fuel tank. We hit another fuel tank. And another one. Looks like we knocked out an engine. Alright. Alright, we are scoring some serious damage on this thing. <clears throat> Next salvo should cripple it. Hopefully we'll start knocking out some shields soon. And um, then we'll be able to... Uh, we'll be able to finish it off a lot faster. But here comes the next one. <clears throat> and... Boom! 60 hits. Let's see what we took out this time. So we lost two salvers to point defense fire. Hits. Another two fuel tanks. Two more fuel tanks. Lots more fuel tanks. A few more engines. And we scored some laser hits as well. Um, that broke, that managed to skip the shields. Ooh, look at that. Oh, no, never mind. For a second, I thought that the, uh, shields were... No, they lost some shields. No, no, they did lose a shield. Went from 22 to 31. Yeah, we, we, yeah, he took some shield damage. He lost some shield generators. Beautiful. This will make things a lot easier. We won't be able to get the shield as high. Next salvo will be a big one. And here it comes. And bang, another 63 hits. 
So these would have stripped out the shields, and then we got a whole buttload of fuel tanks. Now, because enemies don't actually use fuel, these are basically just, you know, cannon fodder. But, you know, every component destroyed is a component destroyed. And kill! We have a kill. Now, what's it called? Who got the kill? Yeti. Oh, stop that. Alright, Yeti. Who is in command of Yeti? This one. No commander? What? Man! That sucks. What's going on with my commanders? They probably all got assigned to frickin' Um, to the frickin' fighters. Okay, um... We need people running these things. With the next assignment, that should move people across into where we need them. Alright, but... All fire control, all fire control, cease fire. Shell water and Warmonger. Get rid of that, and... That... Uh, do we have bombers out? No, we do not. <sighs> Move to, and we'll just make sure that there's nothing over there. I'm gonna reload. It looks like they might have been basing themselves out of Bendigo A7. Move to there and examine it. Nothing. Okay. Warmonger, head back to Shellwater. Shellwater. Let's get the hell out of here. Um, Brisbane, Adelaide, Seoul. Refuel, resupply, load ordinance, begin overhaul. And that is that. The swarm, this, the swarm in this system has been, hopefully, completely eliminated. So, episodes already run over time, um, at least on my end, we're up at one and a half hours. Um, uh, from your end, you would have, uh, probably would have cut it down, so you would have it less. Uh, but thank you very much for your time, and for watching the video, and I will see you all tomorrow.